Oh, hello there. Yes, well, it's very nearly the end of the weekend, the end of the week, and the beginning of a bright new shining dawn for us all, no doubt. Anyway, yesterday there was a bit of a hoo-ha kerfuffle, or as other words I like to use, about Lee Anderson, who had the whip withdrawn. Were misses, yes. Um, because of his uh, statements about Sadiq Khan, which were undoubtedly racist. Anyway, apparently the problem was that he refused to apologise, um, um, which was um, an odd thing, because of course you can be kicked out of the Labour Party even if you do apologise, and even if you haven't actually said anything that's racist. I mean, just look at Jeremy Corbyn. But leaving that one aside, I thought today it would be worthwhile sort of thinking about moving on from the concept of a hierarchy of racism which is whereby um, the Jewish community in the UK isn't allowed to feel uncomfortable, presumably about anything, whereas other minority groups can simply be thrown under the bus. You're allowed to say anything you like about Muslim people. They don't count as even human. There you go. A classic bit of racism for you there. Yes, but um, the hierarchy of racism such as it exists at the moment um, is um, definitely class-based, or largely class-based, and has that whole intersectional quality to it, which I, as a sociology-type person, do love indeed. So at the bottom you've got your white working class, your, your kind of Paul Goldings and your, your, your Britain First and uh, British Democrats who were out leafleting, you know, blokes my age who suddenly, even though <laughs> for 20 years their particular brand of nasty racism hasn't got anywhere, suddenly sense that their, their time is now. But of course, um, their clothes have very much been stolen by the mainstream parties. After all, there is nothing to choose between the racial policies of the Conservative Party and the 1970s National Front. Realistically, no. So they, they are at the bottom and um, their only use basically is in a kind of in a kind of white van man sort of way whereby they can be pointed at as stout patriots, you know, who can turn out because they're concerned citizens whenever it's convenient for them to do so, you know, outside migrant hotels and that kind of thing. When you want to make kind of racist comments, then you can kind of drag them in as ordinary opinion because after all lots of people that are supporting Lee Anderson their argument is that lots of people think that way which is a very really odd concept that basically you can be as racist as you like if someone else thinks the same as you not entirely sure that's the way it works guys but yeah those are your bottom feeders and then there's the your kind of actual kind of middle types you know you're making a livings at it like your Sophie Kokorans and your Darren Grimes who are ultimately also working class and very very disposable and my god doesn't Sophie Kokoran know that but yeah, they um, they exist in this kind of um, uh, oscillating world of usefulness. Now, some of them, if they score highly in on an intersectional basis, like let's say if they're black or they're gay or they're a woman, that will levitate them to a whole new status in terms of their hierarchy of racism. Because you know, if you're Sean Bailey, then you get you know you you, you get to go to the House of Lords for reason i don't know quite why is that you know, services to party photography hard to say really but yeah i mean you know those kind of middle rankers on gb news that are forever having to sweat it out because that's what they do for a living i mean if you're a black gay guy then you can probably quite comfortably go on there because everyone can point to you and say well we can't be racist because you know we employ this black gay guy yeah probably going to trundle on and make a reasonable living. Then there's that slightly higher group who unfortunately are more likely to put their foot in it because they're actually running shows. And you can see the way that Lawrence Fox, posh guy, should have been safe, but unfortunately wasn't because, well, he's just a bit of an idiot, really, isn't he? And, you know, if you're definitely not racist in any way, shape or form, part owner wants to buy the Telegraph, then, you know, you're more like, you might well get thrown under a bus, no matter what your particular class background and hierarchy is, as he indeed has found out, Calvin and, you know, some of the others as well that have had to go. Yeah, I don't think the Coast Guy is going to last very much longer if Ofcom actually can get some form of, you know, act together. 
Yeah. And then there's that sort of higher art. Then there's that higher level, which you would have thought that Lee Anderson would be in. He, he sort of commands his own TV show and things. Um, presumably he would be off to reform so he can deliver yet more reform votes to them. But, I mean, you've got that, that then that hierarchy, a uh, higher one, whereby people can say anything because they are simply in a powerful enough position to, you know... <laughs> I know I can't believe I'm saying this, but Suella Braveman, who has a must-have a cohort of Conservative MPs that she can dictate to. Uh, can you imagine how appalling that those meetings must be of that particular group? Who would want to be in her gang? Yeah? Jesus. Anyway, leaving all that aside, yeah, and she can say anything she likes. I mean, everything that she's said this weekend has been probably a lot worse than Lee Anderson, but she doesn't get called upon to have to resign obviously because that's problematic so she's nice and safe and then yeah you get your other posh kids like you know professor matt goodwin and all of that kind of spiked and tufton street crew who have that kind of veneer of white respectability that nice middle classness whereby whereby you know they're just simply concerned about the threat to civilization you know it's not about individual muslims who are of course all lovely it's just that collectively as a group we need to basically lock them up and deport them Hmm, which is just a very polite form of racism, but it is very, very secure. And then, at last, you end up with the zenith of, you know, the intellectual powerhouse, that is Douglas Murray, who is untouchable simply because he is Douglas Murray. He's achieved that kind of self actualization whereby nothing he can do can possibly be racist even when he calls for genocide upon entire groups of people he's still magically out there so far that it doesn't count and oddly the same goes for Liz Truss but I think it's just because Liz Truss is too actually stupid to understand anything whatsoever so if you called her out for being racist she would simply sit there staring at the wall wondering what the word meant anyway that's enough of that one you see i'm foolish enough on this sort of christian based sunday you've got a nice christian theme perhaps going through sunday um to believe that people just simply shouldn't be racist but Obviously, that's just foolish of me, and as a left winger, means that I definitely need to be locked up or sent east or both. Preferably both. Anyway, do have a lovely Sunday. Do enjoy. Enjoy the, well, lack of rain for a day or two. Hmm.